Yo! What up, Internet? Welcome to Bricks and Beer, episode 19. Cheers, everybody. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, welcome back to your favorite uncut, uncensored, unedited, completely unprofessional podcast about Lego and beer. Um, thank you guys for watching. As always, you can click a link. There'll be one right about there. This is kind of a not normal base plate. I guess we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, see, that was like an actual professional intro, and that felt fucking strange. And I don't know if it was as good as me just yelling fuck. Um, yeah, so anyway, welcome back, guys. Um, as always, like, I'm just fucking amazed people watch this shit and anybody actually listens to me ramble. So... Um, hopefully you guys are hanging out, hopefully you're drinking good beer, I am drinking good beer tonight. Uh, this is the Strand Co. Brewing White Sand Imperial IPA. It's, uh, pretty decent. Um, I'll tell you a story why I'm drinking this, and, uh, it'll relate to the Lego, and then we probably won't talk too much more about the beer. Um, I'm gonna show you a bunch of Lego tonight. This is gonna be a good episode, it's like full of shit. None of it's really new. Um, it's a little bit of a clip show. I mean, technically I'll show you some new shit, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, so anyway, just came back from Bricks LA. Bricks LA was last weekend. Huge shout out to Ace and Aileen. Like, once again, fucking LA coming through. Um, pretty good con. Like, it was, it was a little, it felt a little bit on the small side, but it was technically, it was bigger. Um, which I think is the weird thing, because it was like double the space, but we had roughly the same amount of people, so everything had a little bit more room to breathe. Um, so it just, it seemed a little, a little sparse in some of the other themes. Um, I am the space commander, so, you know, fucking space represented. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, I'll talk more about the con. So the whole reason why I'm drinking this beer is, uh, my intros, I'm not talking about the con. I'll talk about the beer, and it will relate to the con. Um... I tried to get beer from L.A. today, right? Like, I live in the city of Los Angeles. Well, I don't live in the city, but I live in the fucking giant-ass county because L.A. is weird and spread out and huge and massive. Um, so I'm looking for a beer. I'm like, like cool, this will be easy. I'll get, uh, like, Angel City. That's downtown. That's fucking L.A., L.A. Or, like, Golden Road. Golden Road makes great beer. I've never had them on the podcast. Um, I have... Had Strand Co., which, like, I like Strand Brewing. It's good. The Pale Ale's good. But I, I wanted to, you know, mix it up. Give you guys something fresh. Something, like, really L.A. for the L.A. convention episode. Can't fucking find it. It's, like, ridiculous. I went to the liquor store down the street. They have beers from San Diego galore. San Francisco. San Jose. San Francisco. I already said that one. All over California. Fucking zero Los Angeles beers. I go to the fancy wine bar across the street because they have, like, sometimes fancy beers. And I'm thinking, oh, they might have, like, a really overpriced Los Angeles beer. Zero. You know what they have? They have fucking L.A. Company Cider, 101 Cider Company. And I was like, ah, oh, like, ciders are gross. Ciders are gross. We got we to gotta get a real L.A. beer. Um, and I'm dog-sitting today, so, like, we're walking these little dogs around. My wife and I, like, we're, we're on the hunt for beer, which fucking weird and so uh we walk all the way up to the grocery store and i'm thinking like for sure get me some angel city get me some golden road something what do they have strand brewing company um so the last strand brewing company this is their repeat performance the first beer repeat performance or at least brewery repeat performance no i take that back i lied uh i had the lost coast shark a nader, and then the great white. But, um, I had the pale ale, and then I was like, I can't drink the same fucking beer, so I gotta mix it up. So I got the white sand imperial IPA. This is double the money of the other one. I guess it's worth it. It's good. It's, it's a floral IPA. It's not bad. It's tasty. I do get, like, the floral thing. Like, that sounds so douchey. Like, I hate it when people use adjectives. Like, I can taste the fucking tropical coconuts in this or whatever. And it's like, there's no whatever in there. There's no fucking flowers in this. Um, there's hops. 
That's what you're tasting. And apparently this is the uh, light-colored twin of the Black Sand Imperial IPA, because this is the White Sand Imperial IPA. Um, I guess it's lighter, which is weird, because it looks dark as shit, especially on this camera. It's just like metal. Um, so, I guess it's good. It, it meets my approval. Um, yeah, so that's the story about the beer. It's kind of dumb. It's like the very L.A. thing of, like, I'm in L.A. trying to find a beer from L.A. and can't stupid but i did succeed so hopefully you guys are drinking good beer this is uh the white sand ipa imperial ipa so let's talk uh bricks la it was uh, a good show like i said it felt a little small but it was actually like huge we like doubled the public day we had a setup day which was so much better so much better like getting in there at fucking six in the morning i never had to show up at 6 a.m once the whole weekend, like earliest I had to be there, it was like eight thirty nine ish, um, which was cool. And like, so the setup day was cool. We had like half a Friday, fucking got to hang out. Um, had some kind of interesting new people there this year, and then you know the regular old people and people I didn't expect to be there. Um, shout out to the homie Jimmy, six QB six Jimmy Fortel. Cheers. Ipa for you. Um, he was at Bricks LA. He was there Saturday. He's technically here still in Los Angeles right now. But post-con, fucking the illness, it cripples people. He's sick. I wanted to do this with him. Me, him, and Jeff, we're going to fucking hang out at Jeff's house and like talk to the internet about the convention and shit. Um, but he's sick as a dog. Aileen, I guess, is sick now too. Fucking all kinds of people are sick. Uh, so stay not sick. Um, so yeah, Jimmy was cool, he fucking got to hang out Saturday, uh, he didn't get to go to the con Sunday, so I only saw him that one day, so it was kind of a bummer, because I wanted to, like, really hang out with him. Um, but we did get some good partying, he was cool, he went to the after hours thing, which was ridiculous, which I'll talk about, I guess. Um, and then, uh, the dude, like, I gotta give a couple other shout outs. um, Dan Jassim always rolls through with the giant spaceships, there's a ridiculous uh, YouTube video by Calbrick Lab. Um, I'll link to their video down below. Um, that's like a really nice overview of the con. There's also some other YouTube people that were there that I'll also link to. And um, they did a really nice overview of the models themselves. But like uh, Cal Brick Lab, they're uh, like a BrickLink store. They, they set up right by the space display. And they're really cool. I always buy like fucking awesome parts from them. Uh, unintentional shout out I will show you something I bought from them which is loud as shit this is a gigantic bag of boat tops in dark play um, there's 39 in here and this was holy shit four dollars on a four bag which is like this is fucking lucky as shit um, so anyway they were there and they have a rad video of Dan Jassim, who has a fucking five-foot-long spaceship, like, swooshing it around. Um, Mark, the Death Star dude, showed up again this year. He brought the same Death Star, so there's, like, a, a stupid clip of, like, Dan, like, ramming his ship into the entryway, and I'm cracking up and stuff. Um, anyways, it was, it, was, it was cool. It was a good con. Space was just solid all around. Um, Steven Pakbaz fucking shout out to you, Steven. I know you watch the show, which is fucking crazy. Uh, anyway, Steven rolls in, and Steven is a legitimate Lego fucking celebrity. And I felt awesome, because, like, we had, there was a legitimate Lego celebrity author, Meg, Lego Adventure Book. Shout out to you, Meg. She had her own little booth. And then we, in space, had Steven. And he had two tables of fucking satellites and rovers and all this, like, real world space shit that's just gangster like his skills as a builder are awesome um he built peace out which i'm gonna link to below you can buy the instructions for five dollars i haven't done it yet steven because i've been busy i'm gonna do it right after this five dollars gets you instructions for a perfect transforming van that's a vw bus to a robot and it's super compact it's like uh, i should put the beer down to show you this it's it's about yay big it's like a, a minifig scale van Fucking fully transforms. It, it has, he nails all the articulation. It has literally everything except for wrist swivels, which is mind-blowing. And it, like, 
I've done the Transformer thing, and mine was not as eloquent or as sturdy or as perfect, and his is smaller, which is like, it's just, his, he, he's on another level. Um, and then he's a super cool guy. Um, so yeah, Steven, fuck a shout out to you, I have your business card. And then he's also, Mr. JPL, worked on the real Curiosity rover, like, is the Martian of the Lego world. Um, so people are fucking showing up, and they're getting autographs, and they're taking photos, and fucking freaking out, and I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, space. Um, so, fuck it, Steven, like, we gotta hang out, dude, it's, it's gonna happen, um, maybe we'll do one of these at your place. Uh, yeah, and then, fucking, here's the other story that I gotta tell. So, I'm, in theory, responsible for some of this shit, I guess. And, uh, I'm, I'm really bad at that part of it. Like, I don't really check the list. I, like, ask the powers that be. I'm like, we got tables, right? And they're like, yeah, you got tables. I'm like, fuck it. We'll be fine. Um, so I show up, and I, I blank. I don't even think Mark is coming, and then Mark is there, like, undrilling his fucking custom wooden crates out of his trailer. And I'm like, oh, cool. Good. Good. Space won't be as desolate as it's going to be. Sorry, I got thirsty there. It's a lot of talking to the camera by myself, which is strange. Um, but anyway, I'm hanging out with you guys. Like, you guys could be fucking anywhere right now, and you're listening to me ramble about LEGO convention stories. I'm not even, like, showing you anything right now. I'm just telling dumb stories, and that's fucking great. Uh, so anyway, um, so I get this email. Well, no, I look up the fucking list, like, the night before, and I see that this dude, Neil... He needs four tables for Space City Layout. I, 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 like, try to find him on the internet. I can't find any sort of online presence. I send him an email because he just asked for four tables, and I'm like, yo, dude, what's your square footage? What's the layout? Like, I'm trying to think, like, does the guy need an L? Does he need a big square? Does he need a big rectangle? Like, what, what's the logistics, and what's the actual, like, footprint? So, like... Time goes by, I get to the con, Jeff, Jeff's fucking jamming on shit, I know I need to provide room for Jeff, I got Dan, I'm like, Tetrising shit in my mind, don't hear back from Neil. And then I get this email from Neil, that's like, yo Andrew, uh, I'm sorry, this seems to be crazy, but I'm traveling from Johannesburg to Amsterdam to Chicago to San Diego, and I'm gonna drive from San Diego to LA, I've never set this thing up, I'm gonna have to break it down, I'll email you with the square footage. And this is, like, Friday. And I'm like, fuck, dude. You, we're setting up now. Like, and and I, I do my job. I take care of Neil. I guess four fucking tables. I'm like, set up all this shit. Like, I'm, I have the most ghetto shit ever. I just, like, start ripping up cardboard boxes and sharpening, like, robots go here. Because I'm lazy. Because, like, people keep asking me questions. Like, I'm supposed to be in charge of shit. And I just put the cardboard down. Um, anyway, so, fucking finally, I get an email Friday night from Neil that's just like, dude, I've, I'm screwed, like, plane delays the whole time, like, oh my god, I'm not sure, I'm like, okay, wake up Saturday morning, and I'm like, I have to be responsible, and like, you know, we went out and drank some beers at the bar and shit, so I'm just like, cruising in, I'm thinking all of setup's done, except for Neil's, and Neil, we had to cut one of his tables, because stanchions, and Logistics and shits, but he's still got, like, a square. He's got three by three tables with power, because he needs power. Saturday morning, I get this email. It's like, Andrew, I didn't get in until 1.30. I rushed to pack this up. I need at least seven hours to set up. I don't want to embarrass the event. I don't know. Call me. Let me know what's going on. I'm going to be there at 10 a.m. And I'm like, holy fuck. Dude rolls in. 9.40. 20 minutes to public day, super gun shy, like, he's just like, I I don't know, I, can I set it up in another room, and I'm thinking, no fucking way, can you set it up in another room, and then try to move a room's worth of shit out to the display table with the sea of public people, because, you know, there's fucking thousands of people, literally thousands of people go to this shit, um, which is great, like, fucking keep coming, and, uh, so I'm like, no, dude, just set up, grab all your shit, you got 20 minutes, but it doesn't have to be done, like, don't worry, people are going to talk to you, they're going to be thrilled about it. The guy's like, ah, I don't know, he's having this, like, moment of doubt, and uh, Ace, Ace and I are both like, dude, you gotta do it. So, dude rolls in, and he's got, like, fucking five dolly loads of 
monorail, train track, classic space sets, like, standard kind of moon-based stuff. But it was really, really fucking cool, because he got to do this whole, like, live build event thing, right? And, like, dude had never been to a convention, he'd never been to a lug meeting, never knew, like, anybody. he never met Nafel, he was, like, on his own little island, staring at the internet, looking at, like fucking crazy moon base displays that all these like seasoned a are pulling together dude has a great time and like you know i i gotta say this like this is the cool thing about la is if you're in lagola or you're in the scene like you are in the scene like we will take care of you like we are a pretty welcoming group considering los angeles is sort of fake and it's shit tons of people and Everybody lives far away from each other and traffic sucks and there's all this other, like, cliched L.A. shit. But, like, fucking, we got your back. So, like, dude setting up and, like, all these people and, like, I'm, granted, I'm not saying I'm generous. I'm saying other people are generous. Like, people are rolling up to the dude and being like, dude, I'll watch your display. Go eat. Make sure you eat. Because that's super critical. Like, you, you fucking, these things are, like, once go hits and you're trying to set shit up, like, it's a little crazy and you forget. And there's, like, so much shit going on. All these people are there asking questions. And, like, you're just, like, caught up in the thing. So it's, like, we're making sure the dude eats. Like, fucking taking care of the dude. So guy had a great time. Like, fucking shout out to Neil. And fucking his space city. I'll say this. I'll be real. Technically speaking, it's not the most proficient build. It's not super innovative. It's not... If if you were to judge the models based on the models themselves, it's gigantic. It's got motion. It's pretty fucking awesome looking. But like somebody like me that's hypercritical and you're looking for technique and parts usage and cleverness and overall effective art and like all the shit, like it wasn't top of the top, but the story was so fucking good and the dude was all heart. And, to be honest, fucking Star Wars dude, Mark, won everything last year, so you can't give him all the things this year. And I brought a fuck ton of shit. I don't really think you should be giving me shit. And, like, there's other people and stuff, but, like, this dude, like, he went from, like, I, I don't know, he had his moment. And I felt like it was one of those things where, like, fuck yeah, Lego community, we take care of our own. Like, come on in, come on in. And he had a good time. And now he's going to go to Star Wars Days and fucking other events, like, and he'll have a good time. And, like, he's going to go to, he's from San Diego, so my fucking San Diego peeps, I'm counting on you. All of you mostly left, but there's got to be somebody left. Fredel, do you go to lug all meetings? I know you don't even fucking watch the show, so whatever. Uh, but somebody will take care of this dude down in San Diego. And that's... Fucking rad. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the the wrap up wrap up, I guess, of stories and whatnot. Um, like I said, I did bring a fuck ton of Lego to this convention. One reason. Felt kind of responsible for putting on a decent show. And like it's dumb because I'm just the coordinator like I don't need to bring the entire convention like that's what other people are for but fucking shout out to Zach and Maro because I felt a giant void from you dudes not being there because I didn't have like one big thing that I was like I'm wrangling people and we're gonna do this thing and there'll be one big impressive thing and if other people bring shit great this was like I'm gonna bring some shit I haven't really built anything new nothing new to like you guys like I brought the Beast, the big, dumb spaceship, and the Black Drone ship. But, like, those were there, you know, last year. I guess, well, the Beast was new this year. And, like, you know, it's you want to bring new shit. So, and I, I don't want to bring all the mecha I brought last year. So, I'm like, what else do I have? So, I did some digging. And this is where uh, my my sort of philosophy as an AFL falls apart a little bit, right? Because I'm one of those dudes who's like, thug life, I fucking sort everything, recycle shit all the time. I have models from 2009, 
maybe seven years old, eight years old, chilling under my couch. My couch is like a secret Lego reservoir. Like I have this big dumb wall full of Lego. And I have this big L couch, like an Ikea L couch. It's one of those cool black ones. Um, it's nice because if you're two people, you can lay on the couch like this. Or like this, you know, it's, it's cool. Anyway, you can also fit four gigantic footlocker bins underneath along with some miscellaneous sorted Ziplocs and bullshit, the entire couch is fucking full. It's full of models that have been stashed in these bins and, like, other shit, like instructions and crap. But, like, I pulled some good shit out. Pulled some mediocre shit out. It's all right. Here's what fucking motivated me. Fucking Octopunk, Mr. Octopunk, Jeff Cross. You fucking... Like, text me, yeah, uh, I got that big pink brain monster thing that you did last year, the big tentacle beast that won best art. There's thousands of pink brick. He goes, I'm going to build some uh, alien planet terrain out of that and put all my spaceships on it, and they're going to be in a giant race. And I'm like, oh, that's probably going to be really cool and really effective and huge. And all he's doing is, like, building sort of, like, throwaway landscape. Not not to, like, demean Jeff's landscape, but that's the whole concept, right? It's, like, maximum effect, minimal effort. So, I kind of did a similar thing. I totally stole his mojo. I was like, fuck yeah, Jeff. So I pull all this shit out from under the couch. And one of the first things I pull out is uh, a bunch of speeder bikes, right? So I got these speeder bikes. There's a lot of glare. I have a different light on today, which... Is not helping this. Maybe I'll turn this shit off. Stand by. Live. Uncut. Back to graininess. Uh, anyway, so here's like a speeder bike, right? It's like a Star Wars speeder bike. I've had them around forever. Um, they're kind of cool little throwaway builds. They're sort of based on that same motorcycle technique of uh, the hinge and the hands going into the pistols, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a photo of this from fucking forever ago. So anyway, I got a bunch of these, right? Like, there's one, he's yellow, here's an orange alien dude on a red one. This one's cool, it's got intakes, I like that. Um, fucking, here's like a, a blue one with a crazy demon dude flying it. Uh, this is from some cyberpunk thing long ago. Uh, this one's pretty cool. This actually feels the most, like, classic Star Wars speeder bike to me. She goes pretty fast. Um, and she's super cool. She's, like, one of my favorite minifig combos, which you can't see. Someday I'm going to invest in a webcam that's not connected to the laptop. Someday. Don't hold your breath. And, uh, here's a blue one. The fucking alien dude, right? So I, I threw a bunch of tan base plate out, and I made, like, a quick and dirty, like, four-foot fucking tan little dio thing with a bunch of trails and um i threw this one in this is my my raised speeder bike uh this is quite obviously my original design this i built this prior to any of the uh official force awakens sets coming out hence the shitty ray figure um maybe i'll buy the official one i used jeff's figure there and uh so what's great about this is like these are star wars ish it's a desert planet they're doing the speeder bike thing but if you throw this in, kids love fucking identifying things. Like, you give them an assortment, and if they can, like, identify things within their, like, little thematic elements, they fucking love it. So they know what this is. Like, I think that's what it is. It's like, children that are young want to know what it is. And if you explain that it's, like, totally made up, they're kind of okay with it. Adults that want to know the source material, when you explain, no, it's just like a wholly original science fiction concept, they, sometimes they have a hard problem with that. And I think that's just people like not accepting that you could be creative, which is weird. I gotta stop saying weird. It's kind of dickish, really. Like, I get a little uh, annoyed by that one. That's the one that like sort of pisses me off the most of the public interactions. It's people like, oh, you really? You don't like just buy instructions? Like, you had... It's so foreign to them that I I don't want to judge them because it's like, I understand it's foreign to you and this whole world is crazy and new and weird. But like, do, do you live in a vacuum? Do you not know there's creative people out there? Like all this content that you take in? Like, fuck, it's weird. 
I gotta stop saying that. It's fucked up. Um, anyway, back to Star Wars. So I got one more of these little dudes, and um, this is my favorite of these dudes, and I will keep this dude together forever. Um, he is the fish man, and he's got fucking chrome pipes, which are gangster as fuck, and uh, awesome decals, and chrome pipes up front. And when I built this years and years ago, um, Adrian Floria started working for Lego, and he sent me a Flickr mail and was like, dude, the guy that designed Mr. Fishy Face loves your model. I showed it to him. I'm like, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Um, anyway, fish dudes on bikes. Like, can't go wrong with that. So I built this little thing. It was very much inspired by Jeff, and I was like, cool. Shit from under the couch. Like, a handful of things I had pre-built now look like a cohesive display that's four feet wide and cool and we'll take up a table and like it's it's kind of half-assed but like the terrain doesn't necessarily have to be half-assed because like these little things I spent meticulous time on years ago building so you know it's like you bust that out it was cool because Jeff's crazy pink race thing which ended up being I don't know 15 feet long I gave him like two and a half tables or whatever. It's a big L thing um, with all of his spaceships. I threw a spaceship in there. I should have put that back together, but it's over there. I'd show you guys, but whatever. Um, so yeah, it was, it was just like super cool. So we had like those two sort of like race kind of inspired things. Um, and then I busted out some older race stuff as well. It's Gark. It's based on this. This is the best Lego town set of all time. Um, this is amazing. It's four race cars, a van, a trailer, uh, announcer box, spectator stands, pits. Um, it has really, really crazy parts. And then right here's, you know, some alternate models. Like, right on the fucking front page. Look at that. The main model doesn't even get the whole page. It gets half a page. And you get a fucking crazy oil rig and an airport. Which, like, that to me is, like... Ah, oh, it's so good, because it's, race car parts are not race car parts, race car parts are every part. And then on the back, they have a bunch of other alternates. Um, but anyway, this set's super cool, right? So I had this when I was a child, and then Gark came out, and uh, Gark is Galactic Asteroid Racing Circuit. So it's race cars in space. They have to have two pilots, it has to have a, a pilot and a navigator, um, very much like real rally racing. So this is the first one. Um, it's the shell car. So all of these are based on the OG cars here. So you can see, wow, that's shitty. Uh, that one, that's the shell one. It's got red and yellow, hence red and yellow and shell all over it. Um, and they have to have, they have to have two people and a number, right? So he's number one. That's the OG printed slope. And then he's got a bunch of other stickers and shit, which is pretty cool. Like, this one's all right. It works. It's serviceable. It flies through space. Um, and then there's the second one, number two, which is the blue one. So you can kind of see there's blue. Uh, I ditched the red because I just felt like the orange was really effective. This is my favorite of the four. It looks like it goes the fastest. Like, look at how fucking mean that looks. It's just like, psh. Um, it's very narrow. I love this canopy. This canopy's gangster shit. Um, yeah, it's thin. You know, it's got maneuvering thrusters and cool shit. Um, I love these intake pieces. This is one of the best like space Lego pieces ever. This prefab vent deal. Um, this is my favorite. The The next one, however, is very much the crowd favorite, which is this one. This is the third one. Uh, this has the best stickers, like this flame detail right there. Uh, this is actually white brick right here. And then this is red brick and the stickers applied on top of the red brick. So it blends pretty fucking seamlessly. And uh, it looks really good. Like, people like this one because it looks the most like a rally car. Um, I like it. Like, I'm really happy with it. I just don't like it as much as the two. 
Uh, it's got, you know, maneuvering thrusters and all this shit. Big ass engine in the back. Um, this is pretty cool. I felt like this was pretty clever. This is snotted, so it's got sort of a low profile. I drive a hatchback, which has a totally useless back window like that. Um, so, you know, the feels. Uh, so that's the third one. And then the fourth one is the Blacktron one, right? Um, I love me some Blacktron. Blacktron forever. Uh, sorry, I'm fucking with the hose. Fucking with the hose. You know me. Uh, <laughs> bad jokes. Oh, good times. Um, pretty good stickers. I love the, the skull sticker. This is my favorite sticker. Hence why we adopted it for Star Vikings. And, uh, it's got machine guns underneath, which are not regulation, because, you know, Blacktron, they would cheat. Uh, pretty cool stickering on the canopy. And, um, I, I love this canopy. I need more of these in my life. Uh, so yeah, that's the four, right? So I built these way fucking back in the day. Like, I'll link to the, uh, actual photos, because I took decent photos of these back in the day. But you line these four up next to each other, and they're kind of like... Eh, it's like four ships, like, lining spaceships up on a table, it's cool, but it's not, it's not as impressive as doing something else. And what that something else is, is building something like this. So this is a cheap, well, it's, it's quick and easy refueling starting gate landing pad deal with uh you know the caution stripes you got the, the little stop lights um some sort of fuel tanks little like command tool set deal refueling hose for refueling um little tool thing and then you stick uh you know your your spaceship on here so one second and we will uh Fucking stick a spaceship on here. Live on the podcast. Exciting. Thrilling. Watching Andrew put things on base plates. Uh, yeah. So, they looked sort of like that. Um, hovering around and shit. Uh, I did have some cameras. These I also built way back in the day. They're sort of like camera drones. Um, there's a camera in the original set, which is super cool. You can see that dude, it actually like articulates, which, uh, back in the day, whenever this was like 1987 or whatever, it was pretty impressive. Um, I also had some little like, you know, pit crew dudes and, uh, because of the Blacktron, I, I did have a couple of referees, which I'll show you guys, uh, which are kind of funny. Um, they've got the, the night vision piece, so their eyes bug out. So I figured, like, this guy's, like, inspecting shit. Um, this is the OG AquaZone torso with some guns on it. You can't see this for shit. You're going to have to trust me. Um, so here's, like, the dude giving the yellow card because you get a yellow card when you strap machine guns to your race car. Uh, and the joke was um, the reason why you get a yellow card is because a dude walks a case of money over to you shortly before that. Black John. Um, yeah. Alright, so, I guess I got one more thing. Um, Neil, the homie Neil, did take first place in space, uh, which is great. Like, he fucking deserved it. Um, I told Ace and Aileen, like, we have a couple of categories that are, uh, sort of, like, juried categories. We have, um, among the theme coordinators. So, I don't run the convention. I just run space, because that's what I do. And there's people that run Castle, and Town, and Comic Bricks, and Art, and all, Mad Max, and all these other, like, crazy themes, right? So we all get together, and we decide overall of the con, like, best part usage, most humorous, and then there's a, a Just Because award that Ace and Aileen pick. And I told them, like, dude, if Neil doesn't get something, you need to give that motherfucker a trophy. Because <laughs> that dude... Traveled from South Africa to America, drove an hour and a half or two hours, whatever fucking long distance it took, after he broke down all of his shit at one in the morning, and like rolled into the con and fucking put on a good show. And they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll let you know. Because I was like, dude, I, I want to tell him. 
Um, so fucking Neil got best in space, and I was so stoked. And he also got best in show, which is fucking great. Like, because I feel like we could have been dicks, and we weren't. Like, everybody was cool, because that's literally, like, how we voted. Like, it wasn't me. It was the every person that was there. Um, so that was super cool. So I, I built the trophies for space. Um, he got, like, a space dude orbiting off, like, a, a piece of, a, like, a satellite deal. Um, it's a pretty cool trophy. I don't have a photo of it. Um, but I got my own trophy, which was second place space mecha, um, which, now I think about it, I should have just fucking given this to somebody else, like Dan Jasm for his giant ship. Uh, but I was so thrown that, like, I won, um, that I was just like, okay, whatever. Uh, next time, I'll be a better gentleman, I suppose. Maybe. Uh, so there, it's a spaceship, it's flying off the trophy whatever i guess they're important to somebody so the thing i won that for um was yet again something i had under my couch i'm not gonna show you the whole thing because it was kind of complex but i happen to have this section of highway <laughs> just chilling under my couch this is a uh, roughly a little over 48 studs wide i think maybe bigger yeah, actually, I lied. It's, like, way bigger than that. Um, but anyway, it's road. It didn't have this green stripe here before. I built this for, like, a Tachikoma Dio I was gonna do. And I just fucking fell apart. So there was, like, a... There's a back part to this that's, like, a berm. Like, a, uh, a green berm. And then there's a, a highway wall. So, you know, it's, like, typical freeway shit. And then there was, like, a foreground. Um, and the reason why this green slime is here is because I put everybody's favorite... Mr. Multi-Eyeball Dude. Uh, I built this for Tachikoma. This was actually built for this way fucking back in the day. Like, a year ago? Two years ago? This has been in a bunch of shit by now. Um, so he sat there, and you can see there's a slime trail. Um, and I had a bunch of traffic, and there were some cars that were lime green so that they were, like, slimed over. It was kind of a cool little trick. Um, everybody fucking loves this dude. Like, this gets a lot of love, which is cool, it's goofy, goofy as fuck, it's the reason why you get mixed allies, to be goofy, anyway, so I was like, okay, got the Mr. Multi-Eyeball Ma dude, like, my third, third dio of the, the display, what am I going to throw on him, so I pulled a robot that I've had since 2010, this dude, He's sort of a generic, super robot-y dude, and he was all standing there doing his robot thing. Um, I originally built this for a very similar deal. Um, fuck, I forget what it's called. It's like, I, I name all my shit, like, dumb, stupid names that are hyperbole. So it's like, I forget what the actual name of the shit was. Uh, let's see. Let's make him look at you guys. Yeah, he can check you out. There you go. Boom. He's got a hand. He's got some little shoulder nipple machine guns. Um, I, I tried to make this guy just like super clean. Like the, the curves are pretty clean, whatnot. So anyway, he was battling uh, Eyeball Dude on the highway. He was originally in another highway dial where he was battling like a giant kaiju and ripping its arm off. Far superior dial. Um, I guess I'll link to it below. I didn't take any photos of the current one, but what's rad about the current one is that this is all the traffic, right? This is like the little cars and the, the tanks and shit. Um, the majority of this was surprisingly, uh, like this little dude, this little microscale tank. Here's a car, pretty simple design. Not built by me. Built by the wifey. Shout out to the wifey, trying to alleviate my stress two days before the con. Um, and she had a good time. It was like it was like that moment where she was like, what can I help you do? And I was like, I don't know. Fuck. And I had to come up with something. And I was like, here's a bunch of jumper plates. Here's a bunch of one-by-one -one clear shit. Just slap them together. Go crazy. And uh, she did. So that was fucking rad. So... Good job, wifey. You won me a trophy. 
Um, yeah, wow, this is a long one. I kind of thought this might be a long one, but I didn't really expect it. So we'll wrap it up. Uh, it was good con. Like I said, I did this ridiculous drinking game thing. It's called the Lego Field Sobriety Test. It's a lot of booze. It's a lot of booze. It's uh, pretty wacky. There's four stations. You have to do a bunch of shit. You have to drink a bunch of booze. Uh, I don't normally do the drunk builds at conventions. This is my ninth year of conventions, which is crazy. Like, I, I, I'm realizing I'm deep in this world. Like, deeper than I kind of acknowledge, which is hilarious because I do a podcast with a big dumb wall of Lego behind me. But, like, nine years, man. That's fucking almost a decade. Like, next year will be ten years of conventions. So I was like, fuck it. B minus was like, dude, I'm running it. I'm, we're doing a trial run. It's invite only. You got to be part of it. And I was like, okay, I'm probably going to throw up, but I'm going to do it. I did it. I didn't throw up. I got second place. I fucking thought I had Langrish for sure, but I lost my shit on the last station. Uh, I won't go in great detail about what it is, but the last station is uh, an 8x8 plate on a headband that you fucking Ralph Macchio onto you like a Ninja Turtle. And then a partner basically spots you with a mirror and you have to build a mosaic off of a piece of paper onto the plate on your forehead backwards in the mirror. And and every station you take shots at and this is the last one. And it's and you drink beforehand. Anyway, uh, I, I thought I had it, but I didn't. Which is okay, because Langrish is cool and I like him. And uh, maybe I'll see you in April, Langrish. So I'm going to show you guys a photo on the phone um, just because I feel like putting this out there. If at all you like tequila. Oh, that's not going to work. Oh, fail. Hardcore fail. Maybe. There you go. Dos artes. If you can find this and you throw down the dough, it's worth it. It's worth it. This is the best tequila I've ever had. I had... Zero hangover the next day. And I think it's because of Dos Artes. So, uh, shout out to fucking Peter Abrahamson for providing the great tequila. Shout out to everybody that went to Bricks LA. If uh, you didn't go, go next year. Get your shit together. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll do more of these. We'll see. People who seem to be fucking stoked about this. Like, I actually get like requests, like, do more of the show. Um, and I, I kind of feel like this was a little bit of a clip show. Um, so we'll see. Oh, uh, one last thing before I go. Nexo Nights. I've been fucking going off about Nexo Nights. I had to work crazy late last night. I had to stay at the office, like, all night, which was super shitty, but it was all right. And the reason why I kind of was all right is because I bought another Lego set and I built it in my office like a child. And, um, I wasn't going to buy this one. And, like, Jeff is really all about this. But I bought this because of Macy. Macy's the chick. Um, she may or may not have a seat at the Knights of the Fortrex, because there's only four seats. There's five knights. Conspiracy? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, she does have the ultimate figure, though, and her. But she's only available in this one set. And this isn't even like she gets a cool thing. Like, she gets a bike. And you get this. And this is the Chaos Chariot. And I kind of felt like this was really dumb. Like, it, it kind of looks dumb. It, I mean, it's a catapult. It's a pod racer. You, like, click this thing. And it throws things. And it's printed. Like, these guys are pretty great. They're printed. It comes with all kinds of stuff. And apologies, Jeff. You probably told me this. But I don't think anybody actually fucking communicated how rad this action feature is. Which is... Like... It, this looks dumb. It's so appealing like it's like pac-man they're just chomping away it's like those things like when you're a kid you get you get those like um little poles and they have like a little handle with a trigger and like a t-rex head on the top and the t-rex head's just biting and you're like biting everything you're like biting the cat's tail you're biting everything like it hits the feels for me um so anyway fucking props to whoever built this like it's a well engineered set um it's kind of ridiculous, but it's it's well done. And the parts are great. Like, I'm stoked on the parts with this. So not a bad investment. I get a regular Macy. 
she, I might have to build a fifth table into my Fortrex. A fifth chair, not a fifth table. Um, yeah. So bye, Nexo Knights. Watch the show. Keep building. Uh, Brick Can, April, may or may not be there. If you go there, maybe I'll see you. Uh, Brick Con, fuck yeah, October. I'm telling you now, if you watch this shit, and you're not at Brick Con, and you live in the U.S., kind of understand if you're from another country. But if you live in the U.S., I'm giving you enough time. I'm giving you nine months advance notice. You know where the party's at. All right. I don't know why I got all serious there. Um, yeah, it's good times. It's fucking a three-day weekend for me. It's Friday. Peace out. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, keep building and shit. Laters.